All right, before we get into the primary topic of this review, I wanted to quickly revisit a review I did on this Kingston Arms Atrium Design Type 14 Arming Sword. And well, I had some complaints about it, which made the review a little less popular, a little bit more of an outlier compared to what other reviewers have said about it, which they're all pretty glowing. What were my complaints about it? Well, one, the factory edge that it came with was horrible. Well, I have the skill and the technology to fix it, and I did, and now it cuts pretty good. The second complaint I had, not nearly as severe, but important to me, was for a sword that's surprisingly light, it's also surprisingly weight forward, because the balance point is, is a lot further forward than I'm comfortable with. Now again, I don't have a lot of experience training yet in HEMA, so you could argue that I'm not used to this sword or I'm using it wrong. But based on my experience in other styles of swordsmanship, what works for me in fencing? Having a blade that's more weight forward, well, it certainly could be more powerful in the cut, but I have trouble transitioning then quickly between cuts, parries, thrusts, things like that in a live fight. Also puts more torque on my injured wrist and I tire out faster. The other thing, again, because you've got more balance forward, more power in the cut, we need to talk a little bit about inertia. Again, part of this could be my lack of experience in how to use it properly and my injury, but for me, I tend to find myself over swinging, which creates a hell of a vulnerability, but just simply propelling the cut quickly. There's a lot more inertia to overcome. I just, I don't feel like I'm as fast as I should be. Kind of like swinging a sledgehammer, which could be a very effective weapon in terms of how powerful it could hit, but yeah, it could leave you with a lot of vulnerabilities because of, well, how unresponsive it is. So, thinking about some of the other things I've been studying, some of the other things I have studied in my history, what would this sword's niche be? It's kind of where I ended that review. What if I had something to take up the slack in the other hand for, you know, compensating for these things that the sword isn't, isn't doing very well for me? Well, I've been practicing a lot with sword and dagger, which is very similar to Chinese and Japanese martial arts where you might have a sword or a short sword in the other hand. But I figured I'd try out a buckler. And that, with this sword, makes a lot of sense. A, these two weapons just, for me, seem to pair very, very well together. Also, makes me feel a little bit better about having slightly less hand protection. And as we've talked about in other videos, yeah, I'm a little bit sensitive to that for obvious reasons. Let's take a look at this particular buckler a little bit closer. Get dressed for battle. I've never done any business with them before, and you can find them on Amazon, Cult of Athena, places like that. But they have a lot of intriguing products, and based on the quality of this one, yeah, I, th I think I'm going to do more business with them in the future, especially as I'm studying HEMA. Now, interesting aside, I got this on Amazon for about 40 bucks. They did not send me the one that was in the picture. Let's see if I can find a picture of the one I thought I was buying, which was the same price. I didn't return it because, well, I'm pretty pleased with what I got. Would the other one have been better? I don't know. Maybe I'll take another shot at getting that one later. Or we'll talk about probably the other alternative I'm probably going to buy here sooner in a second. After we talk about specs, we said about 40 bucks, 14 gauge steel, 9 inch diameter, gives it a weight. Now they said on the website 3 pounds. And when I first picked it up, I said, yeah, it could be. It's pretty solid. It's probably, again, just being an out-of-shape wimp. Weighed it, one pound, 13 ounces. Yeah, it's being a wimp. But that gives it a good enough mass to make me feel safe. It feels solid. It definitely feels like this could take pretty good hits and thrusts with no problem whatsoever. Construction, well, it's pretty much pressed with rolled over edge. It's got a couple of features here for binding. And let's take a look at the back. You've got two big rivets through it that attach. And this is probably the most interesting part. 
yeah, I, I, I saw one review that uh, compared this to an old school school desk. Just a piece of rounded metal. Compared to, you know, a lot of the other examples I've seen, you've got some kind of combination of wood and metal riveted together. But this, I mean, it looks kind of cheap, but it feels really good. <laughs> It just is very comfortable in the hand. There are no sharp edges whatsoever, even even put my thumb up here on the side or whatever. And at least for me, based on, I think, you know, my experience with other kind of weapons that rotate in my grip, I can very naturally quickly rotate this back and forth to change lines with it. No problem whatsoever. And, you know, even with my out of shape self, as, as you can see, I can extend this thing in front of me, and if I can send it out at arm's reach, yeah, it does, it does give me a pretty good sense of cover. I actually feel comfortable, usually if I'm fencing with a one-handed sword by itself, or even with a dagger, I usually lead with my right side. This one makes me feel a little bit better about leading with my left side, and making those bigger cuts that could leave me open. So combining it with that arming sword, really sweet combination. Now, the only thing that I would think about changing, maybe getting a different one, would be, I think I might need a couple more inches. But again, that's my inexperience. I'm thinking nine inch, it seems to do the job, but I may be more comfortable, at least for now, moving up to something 11 inches in diameter. So you may see me review another one of these in the future. I'm shopping. But for now, yeah, this is just for 40 bucks. I mean, compared to what I've spent on my parrying daggers. Do I like my parrying daggers better? Well, you guys know I like sharp, pointy, stabby, cutty things. So yeah, I like my parrying daggers better. But yeah, as a first attempt at trying a buckler, this is pretty promising. So 40 bucks, not a big investment. And I think I got a pretty quality piece, at least, again, one for a beginner that's going to do the job for me. Makes me feel safe, protected, and I can start practicing learning what I can do with Sword and Buckler. So, if you have this or something like it, have any questions about it, let's start that conversation in the comments. And as usual, thanks you guys for watching, and I hope to see you back for more.